now time for the Tag and Brendo podcast. I'm kind of like at a weird angle, like yeah. right now. I'm kind of like sideways, and so Perfect. for some reason, I feel that that changes like the sound of my voice, but it doesn't really. Or maybe you're just getting a cold. Ooh, no. Or, or a virus. Yeah. Or a virus, yeah. Um, I will say that the first person... Um, I actually know personally. Oh, they, uh, they got the they got the they, CV. Yeah, um, has been um, tested positive. Yikes! Just, yeah. Have you hung out know. with this person recently? No, I have nice. not seen this person in um, a couple, of, like a, two months, three months, something then like that. Should so, be fine. Should be fine. Yeah, hopefully we're good on that. <laughs> but uh but yeah so stay safe out there everybody people are keep, still getting it your it's still a thing are you are you masking it up yeah i still try to wear my mask out to mm-hmm. big stores and whatnot because i don't know how it is out there for you guys but in colorado people uh have like decided that life is back to normal now <laughs> and it's right. scary out there it is crazy. I went to the yeah. park the other day thinking, thinking. well, I went to Cottonwood Park, which is a big park, but I thought even mm-hmm. if there's a good number of people there, we'll be able to find a spot far enough right. away to just sit Isolated. and eat some food or whatever. That place was mm-hmm. crazy. There was a, there was a, I wanted to say a thousand people. I, I didn't number people. I didn't count people. That's not an accurate number. It just means a lot. Um, right. And there was a lot of people there. There was a grip. A grip there was a good grip of people. And I was like, mm-hmm. this is a little scary. Um, Interesting. But, uh, but, yeah. It's, uh, if I had known better, I, I would have thought, well, this is a normal summer day. And all these people have come here to play frisbee golf like normal. Um, <laughs> right, but it was not a normal day, and yet they still came. So, because none of the regulations in your state has changed, really. It's um, still shelter. It's not shelter at home, but it's like safer at home. So it's like right. You can still go out and do stuff. It's like not against, you know, right? Because out here, it's uh, they just opened it up to gatherings of fifty. Oh, really? And, and all businesses can reopen as long as they rem- they follow their safety protocols. And yeah. some, some places are still maybe half capacity, like whatever the fire code says. They, they only do half of that. Okay. And everything. And like places like Costco, obviously, you got to like wear a mask and yeah, everything like that. And only, yeah. Uh, we have not got that word yet. Um. Yeah, we're not to that point. So right, yeah. A- anyway, it's no, it's, crazy. it's it's definitely weird. And yeah, we have our masks that I keep them. You know, I keep my mask just in my pocket because I, I was just like, oh crap, <laughs> like right, gotta grab that. And really, I mean, the the best thing and the funniest thing about the mask is it's not necessarily helping you as much as it is. If everybody wears a mask, it's helping everybody because right. really just it's containing your own spittle. Right. You know? Yeah. For anyone right. who doesn't know, it, 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 for people who are infected, really, it helps them mm-hmm. to not share their virus as right. readily with others. And if you mm-hmm. don't have, if you have a mask and they have a mask, it's harder for you to get it by a substantial amount. But, right. Uh, you know, even if they just have one and you don't, mm-hmm. it's still it's still pretty good. Statistically, yeah. it's 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 yeah. much easier for you to get it still. So mm-hmm. wear your masks, okay? Great. Yeah, it's it's very interesting because like I had an interaction with somebody and it was like it's almost just like untrustworthy now. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like it was just a quick little you know purchase exchange just from like a classified ad and you know he wanted me to put the money on like the bed of or like on the floor of his car like on the passenger side okay 
and everything um just because he said his wife was uh you know has uh uh, immunocompromised basically um, oh okay she has like cancer or something like that but um, you know but yeah it was very much like you know we were we were dealing you know and you know purchasing something everything but it, it, it just got to that point where he just was like yeah go ahead and just put it there like uh, like I don't I don't want to talk you know like it just felt a little like shady <laughs> like he didn't trust me as a you know, a purchaser, right. you know, like, like I was not giving him real cash or I don't know. It was weird. He's so like, yeah, I want your I, money, but I want to wash it first. But I don't want to touch it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, I'm sure he'll leave that on the floor of his truck for a couple of days, wait for the virus supposedly to die off and I don't know. Yep. It is what it is. Uh, but that's not what we are really not even talk close. About today. <laughs> we are gonna go for a question of the day. Yes, sir. And how about one of those fabulous triggered memories? You got something for I us? I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. And then um, you just get one of the new things from us each. Yeah. That is not the way we're gonna say that nope. in the future. No. Nope. Syntax is. Kind of what we're talking about right now. So, Taggart. Yes. With the question of the day, would you consider yourself more of an English person or a math type person? This is a lovely question. I love this question. Okay. Do do expand. Yes. Expand. Well, uh, as a school goer... In uh, in school times, a schoolboy, when I was but a lad, pupil, a pupil of sorts, I, uh, I, I I I I mused that there were only two types of people: an English person or an or a math person, and that you could okay. extrapolate out from there, and it would encompass mm-hmm. their characteristics. Um, English person being one who likes an abstract thought. That doesn't mm-hmm. really have an answer, and yet they'll talk about it for as long as they want. Um, right. Versus a math person who uh, likes a concrete answer, okay, like, like something that can act that actually has an answer. So and, we might say like the humanities versus like the sciences or something. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you could go you could go to that ex- that effect, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, you know, science is. I mean, come on. It's just math applied to life. Um, right. Right. And art is like, why did you paint that fire hydrant yellow? Um, why did you paint the duck blue? Right. Because I wanted to see a blue duck. Uh, uh, so, yeah. What he was feeling when he did what, and that's why he painted this, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Nobody right. knows that. So... So yeah. Anyways, uh, for the longest time, I would think that I w- I would have classified myself as a math person. Okay. I still probably would. I have <laughs> more English. Okay. I have more Englishness now than I have ever. But okay, I think still overall, a math person. I like. I don't know. The th- the theory of something is interesting as long as it like has concrete answers that you can like apply. You know what I mean? Okay, like you need some kind of black and white to shade in your gray. Uh, I'm not sure I'd say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you. You still need a concrete concept, even if it can be, like, interpreted a couple of different ways. I'm not sure exactly what I would Yeah, no, I mean, you're not wrong. Like, Mm -hmm. when I'm thinking about this now, I I was kind of thinking about music theory when I was talking about that, because that's something that I'm dealing with more, because... I teach music and things like this, and I've learned a lot Mm -hmm. of music theory, you know, in these past how many years i don't know um 
And, you know, there's a lot of answers, like real answers. Okay. But then you get to the point where they're like, well, what notes do you play over this particular chord? And, yes, there's answers that you can say, but depending on the context, it can be different. So it's much more English-ish mm-hmm. in... Uh, in uh, practice and in interpretation mm-hmm. and like of course if you do a solo and it's all improvisation right that's not like a concrete answer it can be different jazz, every time jazz, jazz. right because I'm talking about mm-hmm. jazz I'm jazz looking at the big picture and it's in jazz drum solos yeah <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. so so that's maybe a, the more of the Englishness is that's creeped in because I, but I still wouldn't classify my, classify myself as a good solo player because I'm not, and so it's still very mm-hmm. hard for me to get into that because I want it to be a certain thing, and right. it's not. So, uh, so yeah. In school, uh, I did much better at the maths and sciences and things like that that had mm-hmm. actual things than. Uh, it's not that I was a bad writer. Like I can do English, right? And when I, but it, I can do English. <laughs> but it's like the the brain power it takes me to write a paper versus the brain mm-hmm. power it takes me to, like, do a sheet. You know, a, a equivalent pages right. of a math test is uh-huh. is really different. Like. Ugh, unless you have to show your work, which is the worst. I don't even care, dude. I'll show my work for days because it's oh, like that's how I got to the answer, you know? Um, yeah. But, so I don't care. I'll write it out. Um, mm-hmm. I've never, I don't know why. I never had an issue with that. But that's also because I'm like pretty visual of a learner. Okay. Yeah. So uh-huh. I'm not about doing things in my head necessarily without writing it down already. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm writing it down. I'll write my steps down regardless. <laughs> right. So for those people who don't do that, then I can see that's kind of for annoying. all those standardized tests. You got the scrap scrap paper that you got to then oh I turn had, in to I, make sure it's not cheated. I got cheated notes. Yeah, I had to. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. I needed somewhere to write something, especially for math and mm-hmm. stuff. So, see, uh, it, it's interesting that you're talking about how, like, with music theory, you you have a you know freedom within a construct, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, you know, you're you're gonna be able to play, you know, kind of whatever melody you want, but it kind of has to still follow these these rules you know um right with the if there's an exception it can't be overly accepted and all this kind of different stuff um right it uh it makes me think of like uh, i might have mentioned it before when my uh band teacher had us all um miss 10 percent of our notes as part of our concert uh, did I tell you that story? No. So we had a concert one time, uh, just a band concert, you know, parents and, you know, uh, unwilling siblings and so forth um, <laughs> mm-hmm. are there. And uh, my teacher, Mr. A, wanted to, um, he wanted to show the, because the band gets a bad rap, right? Um, because it's, it's not seen necessarily as like a, like a, uh, what's the word I want as a core class, you know, it's not, yeah. um, it's not really needed. It's not, you know, it does, it obviously takes a lot of skill, but it's not necessarily like something that's going to improve your, this, that, or the other. Um, so he, he's like, well, I want to show you how, like what, what getting an A in band really means. Um, and everything he's like so we're gonna play this same piece that you heard you know it's about a hundred um it's about or maybe it was only like 50 or something it's like you know it's about a hundred notes for most parts um and so everybody i want you to miss 10 notes 
right? Okay. You're still like an A, but you um, you're gonna miss you know ten notes wherever you want, um, and um, and he didn't really give us any kind of heads up on this, and he's like, uh, and not just miss them like you can play the wrong note or whatever, whatever. And so we played it, and it sounded terrible mm-hmm. because if you know the tuba is overplaying this note at the time when it's like supposed to be soft and you know whatever and a lot of people kind of held their thing because you know we're used to playing it obviously as best we can right to the last note and he held it for a lot longer and people were playing the wrong note and everything like that so it's just this like you know terrible sound at the end and it to prove his point of you really need to strive for like 99% accuracy if not 100% accuracy in band to make yourself sound good so you know like this is our consider this our final we can't afford to get A's we have to get like 100% kind of a thing so um so that's kind of what it makes me think of is is you you're still kind of constrained to that like music theory and everything um and yeah like if you write a book but you can't spell and you can't construct a sentence or you use a bunch of filler words or something like that it's not going to be enjoyable to read and everything like that or even in art you know right art seems to be very like oh yeah you can just slap some paint on you know on anything and call it art or whatever you know it doesn't have to be this that or the other but people train and study and learn and i think the craziest thing about being an artist is like a lot of it you have to know like the chemistry of your paints and you have to know what it takes you know to do this and to do that and to blend things together and everything right well um interesting thing about english is and like art in general is i think mm -hmm. all of it has some kind of theory and construct that you work within what you're Mm -hmm. talking about um but in art there is a thing about like knowing the rules right of how you create it to make it good Mm -hmm. or whatever Right. And then there is a point where you get so good that you know when you can break a rule to right. to make an effect that you want to, you know, if it's a paper to bring the audience in or whatever, because it, mm-hmm. it's outside of the norm. Um, and in math, you can't break rules. Like, if you break a rule, you're going to get the wrong answer. Like, it's not a thing. Right. To to get to the points where you're like, well, I don't have to follow this rule now because I'm trying to make this point with this art or this <laughs> music or this uh, paper right. or whatever. And math is like, dude, you if you don't follow the rule, then the proof doesn't work. Like you don't you don't get the answer. Yeah, so. here's here's the thing with that though. Just an experience that I had as a kid. Yeah. Um. It seemed that the mathematical rules were constantly changing because as a child in elementary school, I distinctly remember things like, well, you can't divide or you can't subtract a bigger number from a smaller number. It's like, well, why not? It's like, well, it doesn't work. Like you can't have five apples and take away six apples right and you're like yeah that's true and then like the next year it's like we're gonna learn about negative numbers and you're like son of a what (laughs) and then it's like okay well you can't divide a bigger number from a smaller number it's like what it's like again you know it's like well if you have you know like five pieces of pie or you know and you try to do this or you know or it's like if you have a pie you try to divide it blah blah and it's like oh that doesn't that makes sense and then you learn 
oh, these are fractions, and then like mixed number fractions, and then like you can't, you know, you can't square root um, like negatives, and then you learn about, you know, I, and there's all these rules out there that like you learn as a, I don't want to talk to you really about this because you're not necessarily ready to understand it, but I'm just going to say you can't for now. And then later on, it's like, oh, by the way, you can. It's called I. Oh, by the way, you can. It's called, you know, like, um, you know, all this kind of stuff. So as of right now, I'm sure you can divide by zero, but, you know, your calculator just hates you. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, I, I, I agree with you 100%. Like, you know, there's there's certain rules and everything that are set down. But, um, yeah, like, you just have to be able to explain yourself, you know? Right. You, well, and that's like, just like... <laughs> I mean, I like, get as a child mm-hmm. being like, what? We can't? And then, yes, we can. And I don't know. Mm-hmm. If I was the teacher, I don't think I would have said... You can't do that. I'd be like, we can, but we're not going to do it now. You right. have to wait. That's a cliffhanger. Let's do right. <laughs> subtraction now. Um, right. But the thing is, the thing is, not thinking about it as like a little kid that like, you know, learned this in the 20th century kind of thing. Where right. Obviously, it was a, it's been a thing for, you know, for centuries and stuff like that. But you got to think like back in the day when these supposed proofs were coming out, like, the concept of zero, you know, kind of Mm -hmm. a thing. And the, um, you know, the fact that there is something as a negative where, you know, could you imagine being in like, you know, ancient Mesopotamia or something like that? And you're just like, no, 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 no. Like, think about it. Like what happens if we go below, you know, beyond zero? It's like, you can't go beyond zero. Like nothing is nothing. And it's like, yeah, but think about it. Like, if there was a way to like do that, then this whole other area of math opens up and it's just like, no way, man. And then like, you know, like those concepts, whatever, you don't think that they were like, you know what? I'll trade you for that nice leather, six apples, but I only Mm -hmm. got five today. So I'll give you one later. Like that's a, that's a negative number. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like when, uh, Justin and Jordan and everybody were playing Settlers of Catan. Right. And Justin wanted to trade futures, you know? It's like, you can't do that. It's like, the rules don't say you can't do that. It just says... Whatever. You can trade futures in the stock market. In Catan, you can trade futures. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, it doesn't say that you have to have the cards that you're trading for. It just says... I don't remember if the rules say that specifically or not. I don't remember. But I mean, it's just like, if you agree on the terms where it's just like, yeah, I will trade you two sheep and a wood for a bite of your burrito. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, like, like I don't I don't think like the parameters of the game really kinda say that, you know. No, um, yeah. It's up to because somebody didn't staple the box to the inside the lid like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, but anyway, uh, where do you lie, so, man? Are you are you math or are you English? I would definitely, definitely say I am math for sure. Yeah. Um, I need that closed loop as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I need to to get that you know a surety that it's you know it is what it is kind of a thing. Um, one example I can think of in where kind of blending the two, uh, when I was in English class, um, we were given the chance to like kind of rewrite our papers and stuff like that. If we, um, you know, needed a better grade or whatever. Right. Right. Um, and uh, we got two different grades. We got a gr- like on each paper. You got a grade for mechanics, right? All the grammar and spelling, nice. and punctuation and such. And then you got a grade on content or idea or whatever. I like that um, approach. Okay. Yeah. And so um, 
So, you know, your rewrite, she would give you like half the points back on what you missed, blah, blah, blah. But when she was explaining it, like she had us write a paper and we were, you know, turned it in and then she graded it and then she gave it back. And then so she explained how we could resubmit it with um, improvements and all this kind of different stuff. And she was going over it. And when she was going over it, she was like, well, you know, it's like, you know, you'll rewrite the sentence where you made a mistake on like this, that and the other. And you'll do it this way. And if you want to, you know, da, 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 da. But she was basically just explaining the mechanics. Like, you know, if you Mm -hmm. wrote a sentence and you you figured out what your mechanical error was, then you just, you know, rewrite it this way and highlight it in the original paper so I know, you know, what to look for or whatever. And I, like, raised my hand and I was like, um, yeah, but how do you rewrite it or submit it, you know, like, if you got, like, 100% on the mechanics? Because she wanted you to only rewrite the stuff that you messed up on. Okay. Um, but like, I wanted credit back on the content because that's the only part I, you know, right. got wrong at that at, on that particular one. Uh, so I was like, what happens if you like, you know, just need to correct content stuff and don't have to correct any mechanics? And she's like, did you get a hundred percent on mechanics? And I was like, uh, yes. Like, I'm like, you graded the paper. <laughs> like, are you asking me? <laughs> and she's like, and she's like, everybody clap for Stuart or whatever. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, that was not my question. It wasn't a freaking brag. It was, like, I obviously I'm- didn't get 100% out of 100%. <laughs> I got something wrong in my And approach. you're really like, I really am asking. I would like to fix my content. Thanks. Yeah. You're a jerk. <laughs> yeah exactly so i'm like yeah mechanics i get you know i understand that there are three different theirs and i understand <laughs> that there's you know this that and the other like i know where to use my oxford were... comma exactly um and stuff like that like i know the difference between an m line and an n line and all this kind of different stuff but yeah it was that that whole kind of thing where it's just like well yeah like and that's, I guess, what kind of bugs me about sometimes when you're graded for content right. is it's like, yeah, you're not going to write like a perfect paper. They're always going to find something wrong with it. Right. And if there's nothing mechanically wrong, they can't give you like a hundred percent like, oh my gosh, this was like the most clearly defined thesis statement and supporting evidence and thoughtful conclusion that I've ever read in my entire career. Congratulations. This is a perfect paper like versus turn around to a math professor. And it's like, you know, um, you know, I've gotten, I mean, I've gotten a hundred percent on, uh, on math and chemistry and, physics tests before and you know it's just like teacher comes by and it's just like oh i should have made it harder and i look at the person's grade next to me i'm like i don't think you should have (laughs) (laughs) yikes bro (laughs) shots fired (laughs) i'm like you just you just keep it where it's at because uh obviously there's a little bit of a spectrum here but (laughs) well and uh, i think that's part of it right and that's part of this whole you know uh idea i guess of mine is that is that English is subjective, right? A lot of it is, yes. Yeah, sure. and I, obviously mm-hmm. you got your rules and you got your mechanics on what you like. Things need to look right, mm-hmm. but when it comes to content, you know, what, a teacher is going to read it and be like, "I've read a thousand essays. Mm-hmm. Did I enjoy reading this one, or did I not?" Right, M- more or less. You know, it's going to boil down to their taste and what they enjoy. They're mm-hmm. going to try to be as objective as possible to say, compared to everyone else's essay, this is where this one lies or whatever. But it's right. still subjective where math is concrete. It's mm-hmm. is one minus one zero or, or isn't it? Like, mm-hmm. so. Right. And then the whole concept of show your work in math to maybe like, kind of give you some credit like yeah you're on the right track but you missed that year you know right uh you're you missed your decibel here a 
you know, negative here and all that kind of different right. stuff. Right. So, they show that you knew the concept. Right. But the thing that I hate about that is that some teachers don't let you mentally skip steps. You know, like if you're sitting there and you're like, right. okay, so like I know that, you know, two over four is one half, you know, so I'm just going to skip writing that out and just, you know, you know, move to the next point. But it's like, nah, you didn't, you know, simplify your fractions first. And you're like, are you kidding me? You, you know where I'm going. Like, obviously I got the right answer. And it's like, yeah, but how do I know that, you know, you got the right answer? It's like, cause I wrote down the right answer and put a box around it. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like if I could do it all in my head, doesn't that give me some kind of bonus? Po- I don't know. It's, it's just kind of, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, Because like you said, you know, it seems like there are two kinds of people uh, a lot of times. Or this one kid's shirt I saw one time where it's just like there are ten types of people in the world, those that understand binary and those that don't. Right. Right. That's just two different kinds of people. (laughs) For those of you who didn't understand. Right. Um, But yeah, so I think it's it's funny because... Yeah, some people love the abstract and um, and everything, and some people hate the concrete enclosure, you know, right. of, of of things. And the um, but my I had a, I had a biology teacher one time um, to say that, like you said, you know, life is explained by biology biology is is explained by chemistry chemistry is simply physics physics is math and math is logic therefore life is logical nice well that's if you follow a logic line like that then yes (laughs) that in and of itself (laughs) is the logical line so nice yeah i like it i would definitely say uh math but i like to exercise the creative and know what the bounds are so then you right. like you said you can push them and you can use them to your advantage and everything like that yeah for sure so <laughs> yeah interested in what other people think out there are you a math or are you a english yeah let us know right brain left brain ish 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 yeah nice man well, um, today in a trigger memory, Ooh. we wanted to talk about experiences that we have had on uh, on self propelled uh, apparatus. Uh, okay. <laughs> such as uh, bicycles. Uh, okay. Uh, blades of a uh, roller. Or, uh, you know, skateboarding in general or something like that. So, uh, okay. you got any stories for us in that vein? Um, I would say, for me, as a general rule, <laughs> I feel most comfortable on a bike. Uh-huh. Somewhat comfortable on blades, roller blades. Uh-huh. And... I am just terrible on a board. On a board. For whatever reason. <laughs> yes. Be it uh, upon snow, upon surf, upon uh, skate, <laughs> or, <laughs> or lo- like long or any of that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know what it is for me that just like boarding in general is just not my forte yeah but um but yeah i mean like bike i can definitely uh say you know i you know learned to ride a bike around like you know four or five training wheels and then six you know no training wheels all that kind of good stuff um i remember my first big wipeout on a bike. Yeah. Um, it was on my sixth birthday. I um, just got my training wheels off and I wanted to show everybody my awesome skill and everything. And I 
got my bike out of the shed and I went around to the front of the house and then I went down the driveway and we lived kind of at the, uh, a co- we had a corner lot. And so I was going to come around the corner and ride along the, the fence so everybody could see me riding my bike. But as I turned the corner, the, all the sediment from, you know, like snow melt and all this kind of different stuff was all there. And so I wiped out and scraped the crap out of my knee Ugh. and just like blood everywhere and all that kind of different stuff. And like, I mean, it didn't ruin my party necessarily, but it was just like, oh, this sucks. Like <laughs> now I'm sitting here picking, getting gravel picked out of my freaking skin oh, man. and everything. And I don't know. I have a vivid memory of something white, like, like it went to the bone, but I, it, there's no way. <laughs> I think it was probably just like I had scraped it really bad, so it was like really bloody and just like glistened or like caught the light weird, so it was just like shine right. or something. And you, but I distinctly remember as a six year old being like, "Oh my gosh, I can see my bone!" <laughs> Over imagination, <laughs> six year old. Yeah, yeah I'm like sure. yeah, I'm pretty sure we just like you know hydrogen peroxide of that and slapped one of those big rectangle band-aids on it. I mean, yeah. those band-aids are rectangle, but those big old band-aids and that was it. So, um, nice. but yeah, so, uh, definitely I remember that episode <laughs> and that is saying that I'm also, that's the best <laughs> mode of transportation. <laughs> <laughs> um, whereas the others, um, yeah, I'm just, I mean, because I, I would always like you, like my brother had a skateboard. Yeah. That was not great. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I know you had skateboards and longboards and stuff like that. And yeah. I was very envious of that and tried a couple times, but yeah. So what has been your fond uh, wheeled memory? Oh my memories? gosh. Well, I have a lot. Of stories that I could tell Mm -hmm. uh, in this vein. I basically lived on my bicycle from, I don't know, six years old until I could drive. Right. Or, or, you know, whatever the specific dates are in the years. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But, uh, yeah, no, that was like my thing. Like, if I didn't have anything to do, I would just go ride my bike. Like... Mm -hmm. And then when I was older, and I was like, I need time alone. I'm a brooding teenager. I just go ride my bike for hours. Um, which then, like, turned into my car when I got a car. I did the same thing. Right. I need my time. I'm going to drive and listen to music. Counting crows, you get me. Life's sad. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, so, I uh, so rode my bike a lot. I broke my... Are my hand mm-hmm. riding on my bicycle. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I don't remember how old I was. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Were you like 11 or something? Yeah, maybe. Maybe somewhere in there. Um, mm-hmm. your, your guess on the ballpark is probably better than mine. <laughs> That's real sad. But uh, I'm just trying to think of like pictures and stuff that I... I know, remember. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, my sister and I were riding our bikes. We went on a long bike ride. We got back on our street. She decided that, well, I don't know if she said. We decided that we would race home on our street. Whoever got there first mm-hmm. was the winner. And I don't remember if there was some kind of uh, incentive to really win or, you know, mm-hmm. bragging rights is all you need as a small child. But, uh, so let me just ask, are you coming from the, we're coming from rickshaw? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's slightly downhill as opposed to the other way, which is like steep uphill. Right. 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 Um, and we, so we're about, yeah. We're about at the cul-de-sac, the first cul-de-sac, when Mm -hmm. we were like, oh, let's race the rest of the way home. So it wasn't really long. I know, that's like, 
to a it's, third of a block. It's, it's like not five houses. Far, no, it's not far. Yeah. But uh, just right where that was, you know, to get speed, you know, you stand up, you rock your bike back and forth, and you just pedal real mm-hmm. hard, and uh, mm-hmm. there was just gravel right there. It was loose sand, Oof. and God, uh, I, I went to hit it hard, and my bike just said nope, and uh, mm-hmm. I fell right on my hand. Tried to catch myself. Mm-hmm. The uh, the thing that I don't remember, but that people remind me of, is that when I went home, I said, "Dad, my hand hurts," and he said, "Ah, it's not a big deal. I'll go sleep it off." And then we woke up, and it was still hurting. And he was like, "Maybe we should take you somewhere," and right. it was broken. <laughs> so, so that's that. That's pretty fun. I had a cast. Right. That was a boring summer. I had to wear a cast. I went to like a camp and I couldn't swim and I was very oh, unhappy. It was so hot. Um, yes. Anyways, so that was a thing. Um, I've had a lot of injuries, uh, actually. Uh, yeah, these things are difficult. So, so I. In high school, we brought longboards, mm-hmm. and you mentioned that a friend of my a friend of mine and me, mm-hmm. he bought a longboard, and then basically was like, "Dude, you should get one, man! Like, you got your own money, you got a job, like, let's go get one." And I was Did like, "I'm juice pretty or sure." The bourbons or something? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> he was gonna J juice or bourbons or? <laughs> oh, at that time, I don't remember where. No, uh. We might be, we might have been working together at that point, my yeah. friend and me. Anyway, so we were probably in, or whatever. installing shelves, installing uh, shelves, installing shelves, yeah, wire shelves, which was a great job. I'll talk about that mm-hmm. some other time. But uh, we, so it was like, dude, come on. He was like, uh, the jets will never find out. I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we Ooh. went. Uh, you already broke your hand. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the first Can't thing. Can't play guitar music. anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> never would have given up on his music. <laughs> oh. So we we went to, I don't know, I forget where I bought it. Uh the BC oh, the Surf and Sport BC's? or something, yeah, that's probably. What I'm just probably. BC Surf and Sport. Uh, so we went there and I picked oh, out this man. long board. It was a long board, Sector 9. It was real long, like the real long cruiser board. Mm-hmm. And uh, I bought it and I was just like, my mom's going to be like, why are you buying this? You're going to kill yourself, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so I didn't want her to find out that I bought it. So I was like real careful, and I think I left it at Tyler's, my friend's house, most of the time, and whatever. So, but like the day we buy it, we're skating around and we're having fun, and someone gets the idea that we should go to the mall. Um, because I don't know, we're teenagers, uh, yeah. Come on, Jessica, come on, Tori. So we went, <laughs> and uh, but. But Tyler and I, who got the boards, we were like, we're going to ride our boards all the way. That'll be fun. Um, yeah, and it was for uh, for most of it. And mm-hmm. you know what? I take it back. We're going to Village Inn. So <laughs> get out of here, Jessica. Get out of here, Tori. So we, uh, we're, it's by the mall. We're going to Village Inn. And we wanted to ride the boards down. And... Uh, for anyone who knows where I live and where you would go to go to the mall, there's a giant hill, like a giant hill. Uh, it is long, and there's a big old bend in it. Yeah, and it is. Well, the big just, bend. We decided we'll walk down the big bend until you kind of get to the straightaway, mm-hmm. and then go from there. So we're trying to be safe, but also <laughs> we didn't know everything, and that's where yeah. like knowing stuff comes into play. <laughs> Knowledge mm-hmm. is power. So we are on the top of this hill and we're like, let's do it. And I look, it's night nighttime. Okay. We're mm-hmm. going to village Inn. you know, it's not day. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we, uh, so looking down the hill, I'm like, this isn't that bad at all. You know, mm-hmm. in the darkness, the hill looks quite manageable, not an oh, issue. Yeah. No worries. 
So uh, Tyler's kind of freaked out about it. He's like, I don't know, man. And I was like, whatever. So I jumped on my board. Easy. And started going down. Uh, mm-hmm. But but again, I didn't know how to ride a longboard very well. I had balance. I could sit on it. I could push. Like, I had some skateboard experience up to this point. Um because there was a time where Tyler and I thought that we could become actual skateboarders, which we could not. Right. Um, but, like, balance and cruising, like, I could do that. Um, but I hadn't done it very extensively, nor on this board. So I didn't realize that when you don't know what you're doing, you carve out the hills, you know? You go back and forth. Right. To make it less steep and to have more control over the board. If you go straight mm-hmm. down a hill, if you don't have perfect balance, you're gonna get speed wobbles, and oh. you're gonna f- you're gonna kill yourself. And that's exactly what happened to me. I'm going down this hill, and I'm like, "This is." You're not wearing a helmet. Uh, no, I mean, come on. No, this is not. This is the '90s, buddy. Nobody wore a helmet. Mm-hmm. Um, Going down the hill, mm-hmm. feeling good, feeling the, the wind rush through my hair because I'm not wearing a helmet. And I'm like, this is great. This is what life's about. And then I start getting the wobbles. And I'm like, that's just like life when you're feeling on top. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, man, life. Throw some crap at Wobbling you. Wobbling me around. <laughs> so I get the speed wobbles and I'm like, I'm if I don't bail... The board's going to just one time wobble way hard to the right or left and, Mm -hmm. you know, skip out from underneath my feet and I will die. So (laughs) I, I'm like, I'm bailing. So I jump in front of the board. Ooh. Right. I take two steps though. And they're two solid steps. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, dude, I, I'm going to, I'm going to run this out. I got this. I got uh, long legs. At this point, I am a runner. I, I have some skills in this mm-hmm. arena, and I and I feel two solid steps. I could maintain the speed for the 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 time I needed to uh, to, to to stabilize mm-hmm. myself and slow myself down. Um, but on the third step, I caught the back of my other heel, <laughs> and and uh, went down hard. <sighs> Landed on my right arm, on my right forearm, and slid down the hill, yeah. basically. And then I like, stopped, and I was in pain, so I didn't move. Then my skateboard came, hit me in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I lifted my arm, and I had a road rash. I basically lost the skin from just, just above the elbow. To just below my wrist, Oof. all the way up my arm, and uh, yeah, it, it was more traumatic than I think it, I thought at the time. We went to, we still went to Village Inn. Gosh dang it! And uh, <laughs> I'm get that pie. I'm sitting there, and I'm like really warm because I don't know, I was injured or something, and. Right. Uh, I about yelled at the person, give me water, because it took way too long to get water, and I needed to cool myself off, or I was going to be in trouble, apparently. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was. Panic attack? I'm not sure. Anyways. Um, but yeah. So, again, the whole point of the story is that my mom didn't know that I got this board, and I just ripped my arm up, and she's going to ask me, "What what's up with your arm, dude? And I'm going to have to be like, look, mom, I bought a board. It was like 150 bucks. So sorry. <laughs> I killed myself. Um, right. But it's on my forearm. So so if I'm facing somebody and I put my arm to my side, you can't see it. And then if I turn away from you and pick right. my arm up, you know, like in a walking motion, you also can't see it. So I did that for about two weeks. 
where every time I talked to my mom, my arm was down, and if I turned away from her, I would pick it up and do like the walking thing or or cross it in front of my body so she didn't see it. Two weeks, one day I forgot. I waved to her downstairs and said, see ya, mom, I'm going to go do whatever. And she's like, what's up with your arm? And at this point, it had, it had scabbed over and it was healing. And I was like, don't worry about it. It's a skateboard thing. And then I walked out and she never asked me about it again. Uh, oh, my gosh. Nailed it. Anyways. So that's just a couple of my stories. I have, like I said, way too many of mm-hmm. of those things. We should really talk about playing hockey in the Dillard's parking lot at night sometime because that's some good blade memories for you, which I didn't get to a blade memory. Well, the thing about blades for me, just real quick. Yeah. For whatever reason, there's like those things that you realize that you should have realized like forever ago Uh like words that you've been using for a long time and you're like oh that's where that comes from or whatever i don't know what i was thinking one day when i was like or no i know exactly what i was thinking that day but i don't know what i was thinking for the years prior to um when i thought to myself one time about skates you know like regular roller skates with the four wheels on uh-huh. each corner and everything. Maybe it was at Skate City or something like that. Probably. Like, I was like, I was like, you know what? They should make skates like, uh, like ice hockey, you know, ice hockey skates. Uh-huh. So all the wheels are like in a line gosh dang it that's what that means (laughs) (laughs) i seriously you thought you were onto something and you're like oh they already made those and that's why that's called that like for whatever reason (laughs) rollerblades i had i had rollerblades you know multiple pairs of rollerblades but at this time right you know and it has just not occurred to me number one that they're made after hockey skates right um and number two, that they're in a freaking line because for whatever reason, I was like in line in my head was um, like they were, um, it's that liner, that like sock thing, you know, because it's all uh-huh. hard plastic <laughs> and you got that, you know, neon green sock that the goes boot. in there. <laughs> yeah, the little boot thing. That's your padding and stuff like that. And if you got the cool ones, there were like gaps in the plastic that showed, you know, the different color sock. Yeah. You know, padding thing that you had. And so that was my, that was what I thought of. I was like, oh, well, liner, like it's got a liner where these other ones are just leather, you know, you know, leather shoes basically. Right. And I just like remember thinking about that. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so dumb <laughs> in line the wheels are in line with each other Ugh. anyway that's my role playing my play memory was just being an idiot <laughs> and i was like 16 or something you <laughs> like was living your best yeah. life my man that yeah. was great oh my gosh so that's funny yeah but um should we go to the new? Do na 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 the new. It's new for me and new to you. Oh, that's nice. That's a good tag. I like that. Um, so my new for uh, this week. Yeah. Um, so we had some solar panels installed. Ooh, what? And um, free energy. Yeah. It comes from the sky. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so they they installed them on Friday um, and everything, and then they uh, were supposed to turn them on and do all this stuff. But one of the but the breaker box, like all the breakers that I have, the circuit breakers, I should say, yeah, uh, are all really old. <laughs> And they don't make them anymore, turns out. Oh. So um, 
the he was going to tie it into the you know to my system and then you know tie it to the back to the grid he's like yeah i don't have the right part for this so somebody's gonna have to come in on tuesday before the inspector comes and the city you know the the power company inspector to change the meter out and everything like that um he's gonna have to you know swap in these uh these other uh breakers and everything i'm like okay so he's like it would we wouldn't be able to turn it on before that anyway okay gotta get uh on the grid yo right so um so i'm like okay cool well then power for the garage just is no more just goes out or whatever oh and like that's that next morning i think i don't know like there's a chest freezer out there that i'm just like "Hmm, this chest freezer is not as cold as it should be and there's the the garage door doesn't open and close and so um so i'm trying to troubleshoot like what's going on why there's no power to the garage and everything and so i'm like testing you know different things and so I'm like, well, I'm going to change out the breaker, right? Mm-hmm. Like, figure figure this out. Um, because it's obviously as old as all the rest of these things and everything. So uh, that was a new experience for sure. Like, I mean, I've changed, obviously, you know, a lot of other electrical stuff. But I've never, like, opened up and done anything with, like, the breaker box. Cause it's scary as crap. Right, for sure. But you actually <laughs> pulled those old breakers out and put new ones in for the garage. Well, just the one breaker, yeah. Okay. And um, I didn't realize as I was kind of prodding around back there because I'm on the phone with like, you know, um, my buddy that's a, that's an electrician and everything, and he's just like, yeah, like you, you know, you just turn the bre- the power off to that breaker and then you can just pop that, you know pop the plastic out and you know disconnect the um the wire with a screwdriver and you're good to go well neglected to mention that and i guess it's just because obviously this is how it works you know for somebody who's a master electrician like you know it's just like oh yeah don't touch the metal that it's mounted to because that's where all of the energy to your house runs oh my gosh and yeah, like for those that don't realize this, your your house basically just all the energy runs to this like bracket that all your breakers mount to, right? Right. And they just slide in and kind of pinch their pinch their way on the bracket and then connect to the wire that leads to the different outlets and so on and so forth. But I didn't realize that, so when I was trying to pull the breaker out, my finger went too far back and just I was like, oh, just, oh. oh god! All right, note to self: so all of the energy is right in this metal strip right here. Okay, got it. Oh, and then when man. I pulled the breaker out, I'm like, oh, that makes sense because that's what you know, that's where it get, goes to and everything. I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yikes, bro. So, um, so yeah. But still, I don't know what it is. Still couldn't get power out there. So I got oh, for real. the freezer running on an extension cord from a different part of the house. But yeah, so I'm going to have the guy, when he comes in to change the breaker out, be like, uh, yeah, by the way, um, I don't have any power in the look, garage, so you should uh, fix this for me. So, but, but, change, but I changed it out. And it still didn't work, so I put the old one back in and everything. Um, but that was definitely a different experience. I'm like, maybe I should just shut the whole power off next time. <laughs> Yikes, <this>. bro. <laughs> Instead of just like, you know, poking and prodding around in this thing. So, yeah. So that was fun. Yikes. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what new was you to do? What use news for that, use? That was not as good. News. That was not as good. <laughs> not as good. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about this rainbow that I saw. A rainbow? A rainbow. Ooh, okay. We had some rain here the other day. Um, 
where the clouds turned into a wall of black cloud. Oof. Yikes. And, uh, and it formed a rainbow in front of this black cloud, and it was the most crazy rainbow I'd ever seen. I took a picture of it, and maybe we'll uh-huh. post it up, but it's the picture is pretty crap compared to what, <laughs> what, what it really was. This the rainbow, amazement. Okay. it was a, I don't know if I'd ever seen this. It was a full arch of the rainbow, full arch from side to side, horizon Ground to horizon uh, yeah. situation with the double rainbow that was faint, but you could see the whole double bow as well. And Bifrost. it was yes. the, and the, and the, the main bow was so vivid. It was mm-hmm. insane. Like, uh, I, I thought I was in Ireland, um, <laughs> without a doubt. Oh. Um, and there were a couple of times when we were driving, because we were driving by when it was up, where I thought, we just have to go a few blocks and we're going to be at the end of that rainbow. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what it looked like. That's what it felt like. Um, so we didn't make it. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> Spoiler alert. The, re- the end of the rainbow is just not... Still doesn't exist, achievable. but yeah. uh, it was it was insane. It was... I, I can't tell you... Obviously, you weren't there and you didn't see it. But... Uh, <laughs> and my picture's crap, so... Sorry. Right. But... Uh, yeah, it was weird, dude. It's one of those things uh, that... Uh, Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of one of those things that you're like, that's majestic. If there's a word that you can do, like, that's that. And mm-hmm. my wife my wife was like, all I can think about is people back in the day who had no idea what caused a rainbow, and they'd see this, and they would just freak out. Like, what does this mean? We must write, right. we must write a mythological story about this. Because right. wha- why, why is this here? What? Why? Yeah, I mean, life we, is ending. We can't even divide a bigger number from a smaller number. I mean, <laughs> come on, <laughs> they're they're like, yeah, we but you still owe me we an can't apple. Understand the, <laughs> ref, you know, we don't understand fractions, let alone refraction. You know, <laughs> right, absolutely. What is science? <laughs> yeah. What lights waves? No, that's the ocean you're thinking about. Well. I mean, we were we were talking about this obviously with your um, experience at the uh, uh, eclipse and everything like that. Like, how right. how trippy is that? Where it's just like sun comes up, sun goes down, sun comes up, oh, sun yeah. goes down, sun comes up, sun goes away in the middle of the day. What the f? What is this weird tingly feeling? What is going on? Oh, okay. It's Seriously. Back to well, I like, I don't know like, if you can't think of that either. You know, Uh there was the old old Jack Handy. Um, uh, I I used to know it verbatim, and I'm going to butcher it. But uh, he's like, I wish I had a time machine so I could go back in time right before there would be an eclipse. And I'd tell the the people, if I'm here to smite you, let the sun be blotted out from the sky. And that right then the eclipse would start. They'd probably get really scared and try to kill me or something, but then I'd just explain the rotation of the Earth and, and the Sun. And we'd all have a good laugh. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you, there's like if you see an eclipse, there's no way not to think about that. Like people back in the day, they'd be like, "What is this? I guess we're dead. I guess we're gonna die today." Like, yeah. how can there be no sun? Uh, and well, it's, yeah, like all and, that stuff, like a comet, you know. Yeah, streak across the sky for a couple hours or a day or so, like yeah. See, back when everyone was an English person because they didn't have the answers, <laughs> they didn't have the science. They needed they needed the concrete mathematics right. to, to figure that out. But I don't know. yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of weird you know anomalies out there. Well, I mean, I even think about it. Um, like we were talking about with the 
with the coronavirus and everything like that. Yeah. How it's this unseen, unknowable, right? In in uh, you know, a practical sense, kind of thing where like, you know, we obviously understand communicable, communi- whatever. Right. We, we understand Diseases. how to say words. <laughs> Um, diseases and everything like that um, a lot better so it's like oh if that guy coughs and then I you know get the I'll get the virus because of this and it'll enter my body under this 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 this. but like back in the day it's just like yeah that guy died it's like okay well let's move his body man everybody that moved his body just died well let's move all their bodies well everybody that's moved all their bodies just died you know like it's it's just it's just crazy to think right. how you know how fast that stuff would spread, and you have you know, and that's you know again like all the different understandings that you'll have like oh well it's demons or it's right you know a curse or whatever it might be because it's just like yeah it's so unknowable with that understanding and technology that they had. To, to be able to say like oh no 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 so the very basic building block of life called DNA <laughs> <Right>. or RNA <laughs> it likes to get into your body and just kind of mess crap up well, well like why what's what? the purpose of that well it's just kind of floating around in there and it's like hey you know what if I can multiply then I'm all good baby <laughs> you know it's, it's weird yeah, dude, even now you explain it to me, and I'm like, that's not how life works. <laughs> it is crazy when you think about that in in general, where um, life is all about, like, you know, replication, propagate, like, right. you know, and everything like that. And, like, a virus is, like, really only goal is to replicate itself. Right. At the same time a lot of times kill like I mean if it goes too far it kills whatever it's it's supposed to be replicating you know right and so it's like it kills or it kills its host that then can't replicate it anymore it's like eh shoot I hope somebody gets into somebody else waiting around (laughs) like um T. Gandhi are you familiar with this disease at all I don't think so T. Gandhi is a parasitic disease that cats get. Okay. And pretty much every cat in the world has it, apparently. Nice. Um, but what <laughs> way happens... To, way to go, disease. You did yeah, it. it. No, seriously. And this is kind of how it works. So, um, so cats get it, and it um, lives in their digestive tract. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember exactly where the life cycle, you know, like if the eggs come out here or there or wherever. Um, but um, when they um, when they pass it and the uh, parasite is in their feces, if a um, rat like walks like across that or like comes in contact with like cat feces or something like that Uh it'll contract you know the the disease and it then rewires the rat's brain so it's not afraid of cats and it's like attracted to cat urine what so it like goes like and seeks out cats essentially which then of course eat it and that's how the T. Gandhi gets into a new cat and starts the cycle all over again. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Yeah. And like perfect. It's like, I want to protect the things that are going to host me. Here's food yeah. for you, hosts. And they're like, delicious, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna make it so I get eaten more so you know, and, and everything like that. And so and there's, there like if if humans contract it, then they they have certain uh, <clears throat> effects, kind of similar to that. Like I can't remember exactly, but they'll they'll have like a more affinity to like cat urine is one of the nastiest smelling things out there. 
but it won't bother them as much. Interesting. Over stuff like that, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, it's weird to think that, like, you know, something that small is is basically, you know, controlling an organism that's, yeah. you know, um, millions of times bigger than it. And it's it's just like, hey, man. I just want to replicate. I just want to get to back into a cat. It's like to what end? It's like to have more kids. Then we'll just, just need. I just need there. kids. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So rainbow though. Rainbow. Rainbow, rainbow is cool. <laughs> yeah, man. Double <laughs> rainbow. What does it mean? Um, I can see the Bifrost. I can see that as a as a thing. Yeah. You know, it connects kind of heaven to earth, especially if you don't see necessarily like... Well, I mean, even if you saw like... Like, you know, if you see a rainbow from point to point, you know, and everything, you would right. think like, oh, yeah, that's like a bridge. Like, you could walk across that. You know? Right. It's probably getting that person from that... You know, you're in Norway, right? So you're like you know you see it at the bottom of a fjord and then like at the top of a fjord and you're like uh yeah obviously the easiest way to get there would be across the freaking rainbow because it's nice and smooth and right you know pretty and everything like just don't fall off the edge or else uh shy guy is gonna have to come and grab you and or <laughs> not shy guy <laughs> what is it it's not shy guy it's uh Oh, you're talking Lakitu? Like, Lakitu. You come and grab like, you and put you back on, on like, the Rainbow yeah. Road? <laughs> yeah, Lakitu is just going to come and like put you back on the Rainbow Road. But, uh, but yeah, it's like, man, I would totally go on that Rainbow Bridge rather than climb that freaking fjord. Right. So, yeah. Nice. But we will uh, post that uh, picture on yeah. the Instagram. Sorry, it's not so better. You can, you can share it and uh, share the podcast with uh, with your friends. Yeah. As well. Maybe I'll look up if some professional photographer took a picture of it. Because my picture sucks. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, man. That picture's your picture. Thanks. And it's 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 good it's, <laughs> it's your experience fine. because you know you can always find a crazy like picture of a rainbow and and I'm <sighs> starting to doubt some of these other ones like <laughs> when lightning makes like a crazy shape in the sky or something you're like it's just painted yeah it's like that's just gotta be but I could probably find someone's uh a photograph from that specific day of that specific rainbow. That's what I meant. Right. But right. anyways, thanks all you folks out there for listening up to us ramble on for over an hour. We appreciate it. We like you. Tell us stuff about you. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, we did get a, a correction on the... Um, one plant, one sandwich, which is uh, Dwight speaking about his brother, played by Tom Middle uh, Middleditch. Yeah. Um, when he um, he's talking about him growing, he could grow anything. It's like he had a, a peanut butter or a peanut grape hybrid. Yeah. So that was something that was brought up to our attention. So thank you, our loyal listener. We appreciate it, man. Mm -hmm. You're excellent. Yeah. Um, keep them coming. Uh, tag nbrando at gmail.com and uh, Instagram as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Talk to you next week. All right, guys. Bye.